The Coppernado is back. What do you want? <laughs> What's that, Copper? You want us to help little old ladies now? You're local law enforcement, aren't you? Helping troubled civilians should fall under your jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. We'll send someone out. Who is? Wait. It's the pigs, isn't it? God. Poor lady. Don't worry. We'll handle this. I think she got some family in Kurong or something. Bastards left her alone when she got sick. We've been getting complaints. Hey, wasn't Everard's B team looking for her the other day? They said something about her, I don't know, finding something? Yeah, I think you're right, Jean. She have something of yours, pig. You're fucking with me. Your gun. She had your fucking gun. Sure did, boss. Heard him loud and clear. The pigs lost his gun to the pigs. Well, at least I can see you got it back. If you have any questions. Walls. Like before. Just an old lady. Her kids moved away years ago. Never come to visit. Never took her calls. She gets out every now and then. She did ride by lots of us when we were kids. Always was a little old but still. Us kids? That must have been ages ago. She was better then. The children kept her together. Get wanted to be a cop, you mean? Well, she... Shit. I don't actually know. Anyone know why she started acting like a pig? No fucking clue. It's gotta be the crazy. Who'd want to be a pig? No, I didn't. Because I'm not fucking stupid, Polisante. Yeah, cop. That's some pretty fucking weird shit to say. The pigs live a weird. But whatever gets you through the day. No problem, old cop man. We take care of our mentally ill here in Martinez. Ain't that right, boys? Sure enough, we're the real heroes on these streets. The tent is just tarpaulin fabric covering a pile of stuff. The flap is open. Inside, three young men are listening to some new form of music. It's like nothing you've ever heard. One of them looks at you. Come on, get in and close the flap behind you. The warm stuff's getting out. Sorry, we barely have room for one. You go ahead. I'm too old for this. I'm sure you will feel right at home. I'll keep watch.
people just want to spin tapes without them spooking it up. Place has bad signs. No one can dance like that. Thank you, Egghead. So you're gonna look into it, right? It should be a police matter. Getting them out. Whatever spooky stuff they're doing, I'm sure it's not what the Ecclesiastes meant their property for. All right, man. Andre's obviously very happy you took him seriously. The whole tent is. The boys exchanged giddy looks. Yes, I asked Noy to install a measure against more drifters wandering... Heavy wooden doors, more than twice your height, stand shut in front of you. The rectangular sea-worn ornamentation appears in stark contrast to the padlock, carelessly drilled into the wood. This cheap-looking padlock is sturdily built. It shackles together a hasp and a staple screwed into the wooden door. The lock is adorned with a yellow sticker. It'll be easier to break the staple than the lock. Also, that sticker is interesting. Somehow, you see a yellow circle with two X's and a big curve below them that looks like a mouth. You're pretty sure you haven't seen it before, but what the symbol depicts is clear enough. A smiling dead guy.
church, it's almost palpable. All the shifting matter and shuffling of living things is gone. Nothing seems to exist beyond the church anymore. Maybe if you were to stand in just the right spot, even your footsteps would be completely silent. And then it's gone. Almost all of it, but for the faintest of hums. You can hardly hear your own breathing. Your voice is barely audible. Not a howl, but the softest of whimpers. It's unnerving. You produce a few muffled thumps, after which the silence feels even more total, somehow. The lieutenant points to his ears and shakes his head. Then he leans closer. Can you hear anything? I wonder why the church was built with such strange acoustics. His detached tone conceals how uncomfortable he is. The lieutenant doesn't reply, but you can sense him tense up next to you. The orderly rows of ceiling panels become barely visible, then disappear completely in the darkness of the tower overhead. It's like there's something moving up there. A shadow has emerged from the tower and it's making its way toward you through all the other shadows. It's not a shadow anymore, becoming more substantial as it gets closer. The shape of an animal descends. Officer, is there something up there? Oh no, you've lost sight of it. Where did it go? Prepare for an attack. You see something hanging from the rafters, looking straight at you with dark eyes. Maybe it's possible to talk to it. Is that a man? A man made of the same stuff as the carpentry of the building. He is studying you intently. The man leaned forward a little, fixing you with a steady, unreadable gaze, then speaks. Habitual alcohol use has made you into a scared little pussy, Holmes. But don't worry, everything's gonna be all right. You come to the right place. That accent is Villa Lobos, a peninsula in Mesk and a district in general. There's a sizable contingent of Villa Lobos speaking mesks in Rivershaw. Here you can receive the mother's love. And when you're ready, she will take your hand and lift you out of the despair at the bottom of that body. This man is obviously a habitual narcotics user. Do we really need to question him? Hey, and what was that about the bottle again? You haven't even drank that much lately. Lay off it already. Shish. Oh yeah, sure. You don't know anything about alcohol use. You got it all under control, way. I could smell the control all the way over here. I was like you once, just dragging my feet to the next bottle. Shit was dark, Holmes. You know, actually, since we're here, you may want to pay attention to what the ceiling climber is saying. Look at these crazies. What is this shit? The grave's coming for your little identity sooner than you think, Holmes. You sure you're ready? The mother could set you free from all that shit. 
This is the church of the mother of silence. You are welcome here. This mother of silence sounds like a serious player. You might want to be careful until you find out what you're dealing with. Sure did, Holmes. <laughs> I am, at least in part, Holmes, until the mother's love burns away the cruel distinctions of the body. What does he mean in part? Bones. Just see her typing on her computer now and then. We got different interests. I'm afraid not, Esse. You just have to wait until she comes back, or... Or search through her radio computer. machine stands in the corner, watched over by the figures on the stained glass window. It's turned on and quivering with soft electricity. Another radio computer. And this time it's already turned on. We should leave. I doubt this place bears any connection to the case. It's also quite similar to the one we have down at the station must be the same mother. The one you saw earlier was the Reem Civic. 
This is the Ream Prefect, a model number RC7024, equipped with a Fell mainframe and a Ream compatible Interim printer. You see fluorescent play and print buttons on the keyboard. A hatch connected to the central compartment is wide open. The lieutenant says nothing. You see the machine's glowing frame reflected back from his diamond-shaped glasses. You're free to proceed. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. Silver tape on the side says, in black marker, Log, February to March. This is the machine's filament memory. Press play to access its contents. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good evening. Fortress accident on Sandrun. This is the East Insulindian Hopita Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? It's the same old woman you spoke with through the radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Good, thank you. Please repeat. Is this the personal log? Good. Please repeat the password. Let's look around. There's no use trying to guess the answer. Maybe he knows something. Received. I will register this login attempt. Fortress accident, is there anything else I can do for you today? I have two machines registered to this company name in Martinez. One on Sambrun, the other on Rue de Saint-Guedelaine. Saint-Brune, that's the church. And Rue de Saint-Guilaine? That's the doomed commercial area. Anything else I can help you with? Sleep well, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. Nothing happens. Oh, hey, Wei, there's coffee in the back. Oh, Wei, I meant the mother's love. Coffee in the back, something familiar about that. Coffee and stale cookies. Look, man, I'm at liberty to talk about the sacred blaze of the mother's glorious heart, but not about the coffee. Too many times, Essay, you need it for something. Surveys are a good way to fish for personal information, especially in the name of public safety. Don't swear, Evato. The password is afterlife death. What you think of that? Makes me almost pity La Nilita. Kenya, when I hear it. I think we're done here, Esse. That was an interesting conversation. However, I'm still not sure whether we'll find our suspect here. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated, revealing fluorescent play and print buttons. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Good evening. But good. Please repeat the password. Good. I have unlocked the filament. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Sleep well, Fortress Accident. The machine's keyboard is still illuminated. The printer prints out a long text document with dated paragraphs. It looks a bit like someone's journal. 
The first entry made on the 4th of February, 51, by an unknown author, is short and concise. Arrived at the church, the door was boarded up, so I used the crowbar to get inside. Looks like the place has been deserted. Nothing out of the ordinary, but I'll ask around. Need to figure out how to get the electricity in. The lieutenant leans closer, scouring the printout over your shoulder. Just as you finish reading, he looks up, muttering under his breath. 4th of February. That's over a month ago. Whoever set up those machines has been here for quite a while. Our case? No, I don't think so. It must be some local eccentric. 6th of February, 51. Had a little chat with the local fishermen. Said I shouldn't go near that place. That the church was spooky and ridden with narcotics. It's a little spooky, all right. Still haven't figured out the electricity. See? Even one of the spookers themselves says it's unnerving. What was that about narcotics? This could prove to be interesting. 7th of February, 51. Finally got the electricity in. Next on the agenda, a new antenna. I'm thinking Esca series, something advanced. 8th of February, 51. Bought the antenna, had some problems setting it up. Called Simo for help. Heard the others are back to making art. Drinking somewhere out of town. Sulislav started a rock band again. Lexi has been seen asking money from strangers. But at least the artists have their act together. They're qualified labor. They can get work anywhere. Graphic design, ads. The programmers are doing fine too. I mean, they're programmers. The writers though, they're fucked. I just have to find out what caused that data loss and be done with it. Still don't understand how it managed to wipe out the backup when the backup wasn't even connected to the front. I know, I know. Everyone thinks it's impossible. They say I must be lying. I'm here to set it right. Seems like something to do with radio computers. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about them to understand what the author is saying. Something about the backup data getting destroyed and how everyone thought it was the author's fault. Let's just keep reading. I think these people worked in the radio computer games business. The one we saw in the Doom commercial area. They must be our former co-workers. 12th of February, 51. Brought some food from the grocery store. Apparently, there's a strike going on in the harbor. Definitely not happy to see the Martinez people again. Everything's now set up in the church. Going to start working tomorrow, 8 a.m. The strike. We are nearing the date of the murder. Keep reading. I'm interested now. I want to know what's that radio anomaly that sent this person here in the first place. 25th of February, 51. I've been sending data up to Lintel for a while now, trying to recreate the data loss, but nothing. Didn't even feel like logging in the disappointment, but I did discover a curious audio spatial anomaly at the back of the church. I've named it the Swallow. It swallows sound. Need to get some mics. Is she talking about? 28th of February, 51. Yes, the first recordings confirm that the swallow is real and I'm not just losing my mind. It's a pillar of silence with a diameter of approximately three meters. Seems like the higher I go, the less I record. This might be a coincidence, or it could be connected to the data loss that led me here. The pillar of silence. She is talking about the silence. Is she suggesting it's more than just an architectural quirk? The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. The lieutenant doesn't answer. He follows your gaze, studying the basins. The water shines in them. No ripples. March 51. Some kind of young disco men have appeared next to the church. I've been trying to record the silence to find the epicenter, 
but now it turns out I've also been capturing the future of dance music, one neo-disco song over and over again. Fortunately, the song is so monotonous, I was able to devise an algorithm to factor it out. The other day, one of the disco men came in. Before I could even say hello, she got scared and left. Good, I don't want anyone distracting me from my work. That disco man must be a cell. A girl on the ice? Sounds like her, yes. March 51. I got a call from the repeater station. Someone has tried to access the radio computer in our old office in Martinez. Can't do anything about it. The storekeeper still doesn't want to let me inside the building. Thinks I'm part of some kind of curse. How Martinez of her. March 51. A new two-meter aux cable. Noodles. Crackers. Ping-pong energy drinks. Water. Toothpaste. Gum. Also, some canned air. Your reading is interrupted by the sound of the church door opening. A strange woman makes straight for the radio computer. Breaking into my radio computer, I see. I do apologize for the intrusion, madame. We are with the RCM, you see. Well, you won't find any music venue organizers here. It's just me and my computer, and it has been this way for weeks. Now please give me some room. I need two seconds to see that you haven't destroyed anything. We should talk to her, after she has rebooted the machine. In white, silver and apricot films, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval-faced and sad a dark and radiant majesty. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs, clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should kneel. Cold wind seeps in from the crack in the glass. Snowdrifts cover the floorboards at your feet. Above, you feel her multicolored eyes on you, inspecting you, as if under a microscope. The woman looks down at you, standing there. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye. Of what? Compassion? Remorse? As that great and desperate thought passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Your fingertips touch your chest four times as you stand in the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles, a distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. Yes, I wasn't sure before, but this must be the DeLorean Church of Humanity in Martinez. It's called the Small Pinewood Church in some records. It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they called them, the Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find the instigator here. Something else, perhaps? A pang of guilt. The lieutenant is leaving something out. I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shot to pieces. Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can't be sure. Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I am pretty sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it why it was conducted or who participated. 
I try not to pry into extradi street matters. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Humanism stands above you. The mother of humanism stands above you, a precious and complex. Despite the damage you've done to yourself, the title appears lodged in your hippocampus. In the wake of the discovery of this Isola, the Insulindian, by explorers from the continent of Muindi, she is, among other things, the innocence of inter-isolary travel and the connected world. Many things, you know she was a woman of the court, the wife of an influential Marchese, and eventually the principal advisor to Irene la Navigateur, Queen of Serene modern-day Sir Laclay, also that she was gorgeous beyond beauty. Draped in ancient sadness, are you sure you want to remember this bit of historic trivia? Standing under a long slender form like this, dwarfed? The past is a silo of sadness, fermenting. You should keep away. No, you must know. Terribly, women of the court were expected to play both contract bridge and chess sufficiently well to prove an interesting challenge to a man. A simple grasp in matters of philosophy, theology, and science was encouraged. She was, by all means, a kept woman. She made the most of her position in the Antidelorean court, a court visited by the most prominent thinkers and artists of the day. In secret, she was becoming the era's preeminent philosopher of the state. A scalpel, a piercing gaze. She was an almost preternaturally magnetic and intelligent individual. To her contemporaries, she appeared out of time, a messenger from the future of the species. We all fell in love with her, head over heels. Even before she was declared an innocence, her influence was tremendous. It was on her advice that Irene Le Navigateur sponsored a number of voyages into the Pale. A costly, often tragic endeavor, ultimately vindicated by the discovery of the 
new, new world. The piece of reality you're standing on. She was crowned two years after the first expedition returned, setting in motion what is widely considered the greatest era in history. The DeLorean era. Wow, indeed. When her innocence was declared and the queen she had advised for years fell on her knees before her, she was so overcome with emotion that her lungs started glowing in her chest. Bystanders reported golden filaments lighting the already sunlit chamber around her, clearly visible beneath her dress. That is why the lungs are the symbol of love for the cultures of the Riel Belt. As did we all, the lands of the Mesk and the Occident and even far away Supram Windy, altogether 21 of the 40 Mundial nations of the time, immediately accepted Innocentic rule, even before her crowning. In a city called Advesperaskit in Vespa Messina, her homeland, the name of the city means evening comes, but it happened on a winter's morning with the canals frozen and slush falling out of the sky. She was dressed in a white and pearl dress on an emptied out plaza with the crowd far away. Already her thirties, the secret servicemen of the innocents were worried about an assassination attempt. Oh yes, she looked like humanity's young mother, a perfect mother, insultingly beautiful. It was as if her face and shoulders and hands were covered in a soft down of underfeathers. You know this well, very well. Midwinter snow was beating the cobblestones around her. A small attache of officials stood by as her therriers placed a white gold wreath on her head. The crowning was mostly witnessed by secret servicemen. One of the men in this secret service killed her 22 years later. A young man who had come to suspect that Dolores Day was not entirely human, but something else. Something that had walked in our midst, watching us stumble for hundreds, if not thousands of years, until it decided to interfere, interfere in the course of our history. We were supposed to come up with this ourselves. The man was reported to have screamed at the innocents. Dolores Day was shot in the chest with a fowling piece eight times. The man, thought to be insane, said he once touched her and her body had been unnaturally warm, like a furnace, and that sometimes, while on duty, he observed her forgetting to breathe for over ten minutes. This inhuman quality was witnessed by many others as well, glowing lungs and all. It is commonly attributed to mass hysteria and religious psychology. Terrifying is a term too emotionally charged for your semantic memory, or what remains of it. But terrifying, it's a simple word. She was bad for humanity, and you shouldn't have started thinking about her. You already do. Although she is often considered to be the greatest human being to ever live, there was something ominous about Dolores Day. Constantly surrounded by her therriers, she was the most socially secluded and least self-aware of all the innocences. Some modern thinkers would consider her a war criminal for the campaigns she waged against the Mesk state. And then there were the resettlement programs. The Mesk state tried to detach itself from innocentic rule. Parts of the world were experiencing whiplash from accelerating inter-secularism her mandatory education programs and mass resettlement of upstream Marguerite were problematic as well. Dissenters were suppressed by a military force she called the Army of Humanity, suggesting those who fight against it are not part of humanity. She adored chess, yes, but also military war games. Dolores Day often holds a tiny tin soldier between her index finger and thumb in icons such as this. She was also blonde, the blondest woman you have ever seen, with green eyes the color of the Pacific, Mare Interregnum. 
Little is known of her Marchese husband. It's as if he vanished from history after completing his role, which was to introduce Dolores Day to court. In conclusion, yes, there is something lonely, paranoid, and even terrifying that people seldom mention but feel when they think of her. This subtle terror is part of her iconography. Lieutenant Yefreiter, you've stood there for over five minutes. What are you thinking? Something during the raid the lieutenant mentioned? Or just hooligans looking for something to break? The escutcheon on her throne says, Irene the Navigator. She is depicted as an older woman wearing thick-rimmed eyeglasses, holding a golden rights apfel in one hand and a scepter in the other. This is the queen her innocence day advised. Above, she herself is whole. Small figures of wise men, common men, worshippers walk up the stairs to stand at her feet. Secret servicemen, thirty years, stand in a row guarding her. Below both women, in luminous black letters, Après la vie, mort. Après la mort, la vie de nouveau. And then, along the left side, Après le monde, la gré. Après le gré, le monde de nouveau. After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This is the great leitmotif of humanism. A summary of the effect of the discovery of this isola the Insulindian on human thinking. A tremendous sea change akin to finding life after death. Death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. This exaltation is common in Dolorian sacralism. In the early years, it was even incorporated as the RCM slogan. No more, however. It was deemed subservient to use a strongly moral intern related motto. We are already suspected of bootlicking. The sentence was also seen as too feminine.
You can't throw me out. I'm looking for the location of a two millimeter hole in the world. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is because it's impossible to measure nothing. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. You measure it by its surroundings, by that which does exist, which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence, to find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark. Most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Strange things may flourish in the dark. There's this place at the back of the church. A place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. I know. No, I don't. Here. Take a guess. A young man with peroxide blonde hair.
Look at you, honor man. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's hard. He'll understand. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? Egghead cannot believe what you just said. It makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment, but then he returns to the full swing of it. No worries, we'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you, what do you think? Excellent! Good luck, my friend. Goodbye, officer. It's getting cold, this late in the night. Time to call it a day. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. <laughs> Thoughts, baby.
The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. Do it for the wind. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. What is it? I don't want to make anything work. Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Good. Yes, what is it? Easy. When her research is done, she can move out. What? No, I don't really need any help with the project. She thinks about it. A glassy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. It's a backup of my former employer's project, the radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She's making it extra simple for you. The backup itself is destroyed now. But I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on-site? Yeah, that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. In the giant ice bear fridge? I just told you. It has red glowing eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offside copy from the ice bear. Thanks. And here's my Falsund Multitool. 
You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the puzzle. This glorious multi-tool makes a regular pry bar completely obsolete. Hello, isn't this a fine morning?
about this. Teleportation is not a thing. Okay, let's say teleportation is a thing. Wouldn't you need some kind of scientific apparatus to create a teleportation field? You can't just do it without apparatus. Oh yes, it could hurt a lot. He is restraining himself from using a parental tone with you right now. Could this be an alternative path into the fell building? A building like this must have multiple doors serving various functions. Perhaps a basement access. Your eyes slowly begin to adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly unlikely and not without risk to our health either. However, the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around. And it's right here, a maintenance door. Oh yeah, big boy time. This needs you to put your back into it. Behind the pipe, the maintenance door. The metal doors are heavy and the flaking rust hurts your palms. But together with the lieutenant, you manage to slide them open just enough to squeeze in. Good work. Shall we?
chopped man, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. The plaque reads, K. Mazov. There is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample moustache and sideburns look a bit silly. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Hands sweep across the sand. Grains stick into the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Some radical or radicals were hiding out here. They left a long time ago. Half a century? This was probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio equipment back then, but that's all been looted. Millions of depictions of Mazov have been produced. They're not all connected. Besides, that looked like some student. The youths always go for this kind of stuff. We have found a lot of those lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in random neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. Good hiding place for someone who's up to no good. You mean like Ruby? No, I think we've stumbled on a piece of history. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. Evening falls. The time has come to take the vow. The vows are blurred and flesh. Lower intestine? The term is metabolic and circulatory system. Fascism, Brota. You're going to keep your vus, right? Keep your vus, Brota. There's a slow, painful growl somewhere in your intestines, knocking on your alcohol-engorged liver. It is one of betrayal and disappointment. Swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. No, what do you mean? I don't feel it, but 
we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. No, but you are the sensitive one. It's not a quib. The situation is dangerous. Looks like our suspect. If she's in here, we need to plan our next step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. You will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. As she says the word, officer, you feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathways. No, buddy. That's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing is the ULAN frequency. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. A pale latitude compressor is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale, literally crunch the distance across it. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. So, what we are experiencing is the concentration of radio waves. Precisely. This is an industrial strength for Abeloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She likes telling you about the machine. Keep her talking. Look for an opportunity to break loose. It's the end of the world. I built it myself. That's illegal. I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? Oh yeah. Way beyond.
No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not the cops. And of herself, merely as prey. If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. God damn it. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader. Not like the murder one. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching, though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. Oh, well, I guess I always knew she was a survivor above all else. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? My boys? Well, fuck. Those guys liked me, I know it. If this is what happens to people who people like, how the fuck did the rest of you get by? I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. <laughs> fuck them all the same. That did make her forgive them. A little. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral comfort. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon me. You mean the length of a toilet break? That wouldn't even have been enough time. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. Don't know it, but also... Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof, or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a bond there. No one mentioned. That didn't go super well. You've got to lay something better on her. I considered her a good friend, yeah. I'm not following your clever insinuations, Detective. Mm. 
Look, I'm not aware of any hole in Claudia's wall. And if I had been, I would have told her to get it sealed. That's what friends do. Nope. Look, she has an effect on people. Or had, before you sent her off in your moral lantern meat grinder. It's impossible not to look at her when she walks into the room, and very difficult to look away. But travel enough and you realize, for the same reason that she's everyone's type as an object of desire, she's not irreplaceable. Oh, so that's where you were going with this. Well, that's a very sentimental way of putting it. We both had pasts who didn't want to catch up with us, and we enjoyed listening to music together. Why not go on a road trip? The lieutenant watches her expectantly, occasionally shaking from the pain. Okay, fine. I was into her. Clausy was into me too for a time, I know it. We even fooled around once. And yeah, after that I thought maybe we could make a go of it. Clausy only said they may be kissed. Someone is lying here. She rejected me with some wishy-washy bullshit about how she was confused because she felt so close to me and valued my friendship so much and how guilty she felt for leaving me on. I knew that wasn't the whole story, but thought, fine, I'll take it and move on. Oh, it will be. It was a problem for her. Yeah, the girl seemed terrified. The Merc was beyond caring what happened to his mortal coil. It was a no-brainer. Yeah, one time when we'd both been drinking, I said some heated things about how dangerous her patterns with men were. I was a little worried to blow it out of proportion in her head. All the drugs she was doing can make you feel like you're living in a DeLorean tragedy. Go ahead, it's your body. So, Heart of Gold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. That really comes as a blow to her. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? Beneath it, she's relieved. Tommy didn't betray her. No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. There. It's going to be easier to reach the machine now. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. There's a sinister note in her voice. Even with the gun and the compressor, she's afraid of you. No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. Nope. No, I did not. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. Damn it. Destroy that thing already. The lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it.
problem solving. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes it is. You should know the words to say. You've been here yourself. So why is it not coming to you? Because you've misread the situation from the beginning, and now her finger squeezes the trigger. No, wait. Finally, it comes to you. A way to connect with her. She flashes you an incredulous grin. Then she exhales sharply, shakes her head, and pulls the trigger. You watch as her brains trickle out through her neon hair. We clean up. It may take days for processing to pick up her body. We need to move it somewhere. That tent there. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She was used to camping out. You see, a rolled up sleeping bag and personal belongings. We should put her in the sleeping bag, so the rats don't get to her. The lieutenant nods. There she lies, cocooned in the sleeping bag surrounded by empty cigarette packs, books, and half-read magazines. Magazines? You should look through them. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Rega Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine, it's a leather notebook. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. She watches by, motionless. We should read this immediately, like right now. <laughs> 